So there's only a handful of golf drills that have universal benefit. In other words, most everybody who tries them is going to get better, especially at that particular niche that you're trying to fix, like over the top, weight shift issues, things like that. And then there's some so-so drills where some golfers are going to respond really nicely, but other golfers might not really get it. And then there's a whole bunch of really bad drills, really bad ideas that not only you're not going to get any benefit out of, are worse than a complete waste of time because I think they're going to actually make you a worse golfer. So right after this, let's cover a couple more of those really bad drills that I want you to avoid. Hey, this is Steve. I hope you'll go over and check out my website, hititlonger.com. Over 100 articles and videos as well as a bunch of really great products I endorse that all together I think are going to make you a lot better. All right, the first of the two drills that I think are a really bad idea, you would use a head cover for this, and I'm sure you've seen this one. This is one where you stick the head cover under your rear armpit, for me my right armpit, and I guess the point of this is to try to kind of keep me connected, but the problem with this is it doesn't allow the freedom of our right upper arm to get away from the body uh, and keep the elbow, what Mike Austin, my mentor, would say, would keep it packed in, packed in tight. So you really can't get much of a, a backswing width out of this. It's going to make your backswing a bit narrower and shorter, and that's not any good for your power and some other beneficial things, too. So if I would try to hit a golf ball, keeping this head cover tucked in. It just makes me feel very restricted, like I can't make a good powerful wind up. So I would rather see, in a good powerful golf swing, I'd rather see you get your elbow way away from your side to a, a 90 degree angle. So I like to see a 90, 90, 90 position at the top of the swing, which would be 90 degrees upper arm to torso, 90 degrees bend at the elbow, and then 90 degrees cocked at the wrist to give you kind of three sides of a square here. And of course, the head cover would drop right out and hit the ground if I moved my arm like this. But the benefit you get from this 90, 90, 90 position, you get this arm into a throwing position. This is how you would wind up at the top of the swing if you were going to come down and skip a rock or make a karate chop or in baseball you might be turning the double play at second base but you're going to have your elbow up like this it's not necessarily going to be packed in tight imagine somebody trying to throw like this it's a bad idea it's going to cost you distance accuracy and stroke. All right, another well-meaning but really goofy drill is to when they take a stick, and this is of course to try to help you delay the uncocking of the wrist, hold the lag, um, get more forward lean and compression, all this stuff that they're hoodwinking you on. So if I set this about here like this, and then I hold this, you'll see if I were to throw my wrist through the shot, I'm going to hit myself with the stick. And of course, to the people who espouse this drill, this is a no-no. But rather, they would want you to hold the wrist like this. And of course, you got to hold it and hold it and hold it in order to prevent the stick from coming through and hitting you right in the side. Well, this is just a terrible idea because it's going to promote hitting the brakes going through impact. You see this motion that would cause the stick to whack me, this is the motion that is freely allowing acceleration and high club speed to happen. So to swing without hitting the side with the stick is going to artificially delay the uncocking of the wrists here causing you to squeeze and actually 
produce opposing torque the club head has momentum and it's being torqued around the circle then all of a sudden you're going to put on the brakes you're actually going to squeeze and impede that electrical flow going into the hands and making them really snap and you're actually going to apply a negative torque and you're going to slow down and you're going to wreck that natural momentum that you've given it with a throw from the top so not only is this a bad idea because it's going to cost you just a massive amount of distance holding like this but if you're pivoting correctly it's also going to cause you to leave the face open slice the ball even shank the ball a lot i advocate the exact opposite if you could imagine holding a stick here in the grip like this i would actually want you to snap the stick right here i want you to snap it in half wham because i want you to throw the club through the impact zone this is where a lot of our speed comes from from the quick supple uncocking of the wrists now the only person this drill will work for a little bit is someone who doesn't shift their weight or turn their body in that case this would cause me to come down and get scoopy casty hit behind the ball hit it too high fat it hit it short that kind of thing but that is not how you're going to sustain lag in a good swing to get enough forward lean compression and speed all at the same time instead of trying to purposely hold the wrists put a governor on acceleration instead what I suggest you do is increase the amount of torso rotation before the snap. That way this wrist can act like a free whipping hinge, which would break the stick in my side big time. But you're just going to do it more out in front of the ball where the divot's supposed to be. Now, don't throw these two items away in the trash can as far as golf drill goes because I can think of a half a dozen drills that will be actually outstanding, that will help you in all kinds of different ways using a stick and using a head cover. All right, I hope this video will help you avoid some of the bad drills. Keep in mind that not every drill is for every person. Even if you fit the category perfectly for a specific drill, let's say you're an over-the-top slicer and someone shows you a drill that's supposed to get you out of that, if you don't respond fairly quickly in say five to ten swings you're not starting to see a difference it's okay to try another drill not every drill works for every person i will always move on with a student in person if they are just simply not responding to a drill i'll pull out another drill and i'll make one up just for them if i have to and i'll put their name on it but it is my belief that with a good drill, you will start to get proverbial fruit dropping from the tree fairly quickly. Hey, I'm Steve. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that this video earned a like and subscribe. Please help me get to 100,000 subscribers. And as usual, I'll either see you in the next video or I will see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.